Welcome back to Essentials Explained. If you've been following along on this course, this will be our final video in our formatting series where we'll discuss the logic of our model and offer bonus tips to take your Excel formatting game to the next level. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's dive right into it. back to what is really our test is could someone open up this file look at our output and be able to understand where is this pivot table coming from and they look at the data source and they say okay it's coming from my working data and so if i go to my working data tab can i open it up and can i see i have raw data i have a product lookup i have a customer lookup and maybe i have some calculated fields and where are these pulling off and if i click shortcut for you control left bracket or open bracket will take you to the precedent formula range in any formula and so for instance if i'm looking at red paint and i want to find oh where is that lookups tab P pretty easy in a workbook like this pretty hard in a workbook that has you know maybe 40 or 50 tabs so if you use control left bracket it'll take you to the first formula range that is referenced in the formula. So for instance, lookups C3 through C8 is referenced here. Pretty easy to understand where this is pulling from. So in our index match, what is it pulling? Same with our customer lookup file. We go to our owner, lookups H3 through H102, control left bracket, will pull us right to our owner column. Very, very easy for understanding how a model is built and how the logic flows through the model. So I can also go to my calculated field. I can see exactly where this is being pulled from. And it's very obvious what my year to date area is. One thing I could clean up here if I really wanted to is instead of hiding this nine, which is hard coded in my calculated field, I could make this a lookup. And so if I said instead of nine, I could say minus lookups, let's just put this in L3, lock it in place with F4. Doesn't do anything right now, but if I go to L3 and I put nine and say year to date month, and I can maybe make this yellow, maybe I make it blue to make it really obvious that this is an input that is required. And so if I go back to my working data, I can fill this down and we can see that it's still working correctly. And so generally better practice to not hard code anything in your formulas. And if you can use a reference, it's probably preferred so people know what you're looking at. Again, this one's probably fine, but best practice is to use a reference. So one final thing you can do, which is pretty nitpicky, but some supervisors may ask you to do this is to put all of your cursors on cell A1. So for instance, let me, let me just show you why this, this might be important. Um, I'll just kind of mess some of these up. And so if you just saved your file like this, what would happen is someone would open up your file and they'd be looking through it and it kind of bounces around, right? And you don't really know what you're looking at and it's, it's hard to orient yourself. Obviously pretty easy for them to do this as well, but best practice I've found and, and some managers or sticklers for this is to always leave the cursor on every sheet in cell A1, especially if you're handing it over to someone else. If it's a personal file, I, I would never spend the time to do this, but if you're doing a big handoff, maybe this is worthwhile to do. And the good news is it's very quick with a shortcut, which is control home. And so on your keyboard, you'll see a home button. If you just go through each one of these sheets and press control home, control home, control home. What it will do is whenever someone opens up this file, it'll be very easy for them to scroll through and they can actually see on every single tab, the very beginning of the sheet and understand what's actually on there. So one last thing I noticed as I was going through here is 
You may want to add a border to your change column. I think it makes it look a little bit easier to read. So if I just want to add a simple column, I can use Control Shift 7 and I'll just drop an outside border on these. If you want to make this a little bit cleaner, one, one pretty simple way to do this is in Control 1, you have this border section and it will give you a bunch of different ranges of styles for what you want. So maybe you want a little dash border. I think this looks good. You know, maybe one of these little ones. If you just hit outline, okay, it will add that border to your selection. So I can go through, I can go control one. Let's use this border outline. Okay. And maybe for this, I'll just show you one of the other ones, control one. Let's click on this one outline. And then this one control one, we'll just use the same one that we just used. And so this looks pretty good. I probably wouldn't use multiple different border types. I would just use one, but I was just trying to show you, you have different options for what you want to use and some will actually look pretty good. So I'm just going to make these all the same. And then maybe I actually want to call out that this bottom is a corporate section. So if I insert a row here and let's say, I want to say this is our customer section, excuse me, if I say customer insights or I mean, I'll just say customer and make this maybe 12. What I can do is, is just add one of these nice little um, dashboards. Like I like to use one of these maybe. And so click on this, let's put it on the bottom. We'll hit okay. And then I think that looks pretty good. And so that maybe I'll make this row a little bit smaller. So it's pretty easy to see. This is my customer. Let's say I insert two rows and I want to just copy that for my product. I can copy these rows, paste it in here and just call this product. If you're interested in understanding the best practices for working with your data, please check out the next video in our series linked here. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained and we look forward to seeing you again soon.